LB 575, the Sports and Spaces Bill, is designed to provide for the protection of the fairness and integrity in girls' sports brought by Title IX, and to provide for the dignity and privacy of all students, K through 12 in locker rooms and bathrooms. Physical differences between biological males and biological females have long made separate and sex-specific sports teams important so that biological female athletes can have equal opportunities to compete in sports. Physical advantages for biological males relevant to sports include, on average, a larger body size with more skeletal muscle mass, a lower percentage of body fat, and greater maximal delivery of anaerobic and aerobic energy than biological females. Even at young ages, biological males typically score higher than biological females on cardiovascular endurance, muscular strength, muscular endurance, and speed and agility. These differences become more pronounced during and after puberty as biological males produce higher levels of testosterone. On average, biological male athletes are bigger, faster, stronger, and more physically powerful than their biological female counterparts. This results in a significant sports performance gap between the sexes. Studies have shown that the benefits that natural testosterone provides to the biological male athletes is not significantly diminished through the use of testosterone suppression. Testosterone suppression in biological males does not result in a level playing field between biological male and biological female athletes. Because of the physical differences between biological males and biological females, having separate athletic teams based on the biological sex of the athlete reduces the chance of injury to biological female athletes and promotes sex equality. It provides opportunities for biological female athletes to compete against their peers rather than against biological male athletes and allows biological female athletes to compete on a fair playing field for scholarships and other athletic accomplishments. As we've seen, female sports is doing phenomenal right now. We have the pro volleyball team, the Supernovas in Omaha. Nebraska Huskers volleyball team is the envy of the country. Women's sports is really taking off. Why would we want to diminish that? Providing for separate restrooms and locker rooms for biological females and biological males advances the important objective of protecting students' privacy and dignity. The NSAA, Nebraska State Activities Association, has policies in place addressing some of these concerns, but they do ultimately allow boys to play on girls' teams if they meet certain criteria. They also set the schools up to conflict with each other with each school district being able to determine their own individual guidelines for students with gender dysphoria. There can be multiple schools within a school district that could have different rules and different ways of interpreting it. If these are not uniform across the state, we're going to have districts in direct conflict with each other. Those policies are not fixed. They can come and go with whatever popular movement is prominent. We need to put these protections into law so that girls are not forced to compete against boys, and so that boys and girls are not forced to share the intimate space of a locker room or bathroom. Title IX was enacted in 1972. I was two years old. Title IX was developed to promote women, to, pro to promote women's athletics, to give women that space that they need to thrive. It was fought for by the feminists of the past to provide opportunities to women understanding that men and women are very different and the biological differences in sex are significant and immutable. They can't be changed. Title IX states, no person in the United States shall on the basis of sex be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. On the basis of sex means biological male and biological female. The Biden administration has, admitted, has submitted an amendment to Title IX to change the definition of sex to include gender identity. Basically whatever sex someone feels they are versus what they really are. Biden's new rule will erase women's athletics and create a significant barrier for female athletes to compete in sports. Male athletes who possess immutable physical advantages over females will be able to outperform female athletes. 
resulting in females losing spots on teams and losing scholarship opportunities. And now as we see with the NIL, with more opportunities being available for making money from your athletic prowess, women will lose. This new rule will allow men to rob women not just of their trophies, but of their scholarships. This is going to impact corporate boardrooms. One study revealed that 94% of senior female executives played competitive sports. Competitive sports teaches you things um, that can't be learned from a book. It teaches you grit, resilience, how to fight, how to strategize. If women are denied that opportunity, those are the skills you need in boardrooms. We're not gonna see them as much. This rule change also puts women and girls at risk of serious physical harm. When women and girls are forced to compete against males who hold physical advantage, female athletes will face a much higher risk of serious physical harm every time they participate in practice or in competitions. Perfect example, Peyton McNabb. On September 1st of 2022, during a volleyball game against a rival North Carolina high school, 17-year-old Peyton McNabb received a devastating head and neck injury as a result of a spike by a male athlete who identified as transgender. According to Peyton, neither I nor anyone else on the team agreed with it, and we were against it from the beginning. We were all just so confused by how it could be allowed, and I guess we just had no idea what to do. So think about that. You're a girl on a team, and there's someone across from you who is distinctly bigger, much stronger, longer arms. You know that's a boy. Your feelings are not what's important there. That is shameful. The male athlete's superior height and strength forced McNabb and her teammates to play defensively. We had to adjust our whole lineup and put our biggest hitter in the front row, and even with that, we couldn't pass the ball back because he was hitting it so hard. No one could even get a hand on it. That's just pure physics. If you have a longer arm and you can reach up higher and you hit the ball harder, the physics move that ball much, much faster. It was one of his powerful spikes that knocked McNabb unconscious for over 30 seconds toward the end of a game her junior year. While she was lying on the floor, she was later told by onlookers that her body had twisted into a fencing position which is indicative of extreme trauma to the brain. However, a later medical evaluation revealed the ball's impact caused neurological impairments, including a concussion, vision problems, and partial paralysis to the right side of her body. The year following her traumatic brain injury, McNabb said, was full of blank spaces that she will never remember. It is extremely wrong that we are putting girls in the position of having to participate against boys who are much, much stronger against their will.